But first tonight, anyone who follows the news will constantly read or hear stories about global warming. Often those stories leave us feeling helpless that there's nothing we can do. But when a warming climate threatens the things we've taken for granted all our lives in Maine, that can drive people to take action. On most construction projects, the deliveries are routine. Trucks simply bring in whatever equipment and materials are needed. On this job, it's different. Everything trucks deliver has to be loaded on and off a barge. And that is just the beginning of the challenges. The barge goes to Hog Island in Muscongas Bay off the coast of Bremen, a beautiful place to visit and an inconvenient place to jack up a building. That building, called the Queen Mary, is part of the Hog Island Audubon Camp. For decades, it was a ship's chandlery. Now it's a dormitory and education center for the camp. For people who aren't familiar with old New England buildings with thin walls and no amenities, staying in the Queen Mary is an experience. You have an unheated building, no air conditioning, it creaks. I can hear you whispering next door. <laughs> there is no privacy. In October, workers began the job of raising the building three feet to protect it from rising sea levels caused by climate change. This building's been sitting here for 150 years or more, and it's been just fine, and, um, and now we're starting to see those effects, yeah. In recent years, at normal high tide, the building sat just a couple of feet above the water. For some of the very higher tides, they, it was hitting the joists underneath the building. Um, I had to move the service entrances into the building because the water was coming up over the electrical entrances and things like that. For well over a century, the normal rise of the tides posed no problems for the Queen Mary. Then the threat became inescapable. The Audubon Camp and the nonprofit group Friends of Hog Island actually began making plans to elevate the building seven or eight years ago. Getting the necessary permits took a lot of time a lot of work. We had to jump through a lot of hoops and I think this is going to be a problem moving forward for a lot of uh, communities and places along the coast is dealing with these kinds of buildings. The job takes patience. This is not a project that can be rushed. Some days you can only work to low tide to set the base infrastructure and then other days you can only work at high tide. So that part of it means half days here and there. Every step of the way, there's a reminder that elevating a building by three feet on an island with no roads, no year-round residence, isn't like working on Main Street. This is what makes this a distinctive challenge, is you're raising up a building that is on these uneven rocks. Absolutely, and the tide is coming up right up here every six hours. Um, which means that you have to work between those tides. As the tide goes out, you have access to be able to work at the post bases, and then as the tide comes in, you can bring the barge in closer and move a lot of equipment and gear around. So at each tide, there's something that can be done. The project will cost more than $250,000, all of it raised by the nonprofit Friends of Hog Island. Why go to all the trouble? It's partly a matter of history, partly a matter of deep affection. The Hog Island Audubon Camp has been operating since 1936, and its buildings represent classic Maine coastal architecture. The thousands of people who've attended the camp and its birding lectures, workshops, and field trips have found this is a place that touches the heart. Our goal is to, I always get emotional when I talk. Um, Our goal is to see that the camp survives. Don Jewett of Jewett Builders has been hired to work on many other old buildings along the coast. In a grim kind of way, rising sea levels are good for his business. The higher the water goes, the more structures need to be raised or moved. I did my first one in 2007, and it's been two or three years since. The Queen Mary has been perched on these rocks for about 150 years. For the people trying to protect it from a rising ocean, the work is more than a task, more than a volunteer project. It's almost a calling. I don't think you can really ask more than to be able to 
connect the past to the present and the future. And that is going to be the challenge in so many places along the coast of Maine where are these where there are, are these beautiful old buildings that are now threatened by the rising waters. And we had a pretty good illustration of that mm -hmm. two days before Christmas with the big storm and oh, the, yeah. the waves and the high tides. Absolutely, and you can just tell, just from talking to that one woman, how much this camp means to the people there and how much they want to preserve it and keep it around for years to come. Yeah. So it's great that people are stepping up to help them. Yeah. The Hog Island Audubon Camp is an interesting operation. If you'd like to learn more about its programs or learn more about the nonprofit Friends of Hog Island, just head to the 207 section of our New Center Main website or app.